On Ike in KSP2 there are multiple volcanoes scattered all over the moon and in today's mission we will send a ground base inside of a volcano crater. Now the biggest problem with landing inside of a volcano crater is that the terrain is really rigid and it's difficult to land. But gladly I have the perfect vehicle for the job. You can see it being constructed in the background now. And let me say one thing, the landing turned out really really good. The final landing on Ike, look out for that. It was really spectacular. But not only the landing itself, also the landing spot was amazing. But first of all, let's get to the construction of the actual base. Now, this base is more of a smaller caliber, but you know how KSP2 handles frames. Now, before I forget it, there is an easter egg in this video you can search out to get a special role on the Discord server. Now, this week's easter egg is a bit more well hidden and you have to be a bit more precise, but I think the smarter of you can solve it. But in general, I'm super happy how this mission came out and it was actually a mission I wanted to do a long time ago. Actually, I wanted to do that when KSP2 came out, when I went to Ike, I was the first guy who went to Ike. Can you imagine? I, I was the first guy who went to Ike. You're watching a guy who was the first in something. Crazy, huh? And yeah, since then I wanted to put a base in a volcano but never really did it for some reason and finally I could do it and this mission was tons of fun. And if you pay close attention to the footage in the background, you will notice that I forgot something very very important for such a surface base. Now despite that the base is almost done, you can see it has two habitation modules plus a control station and with that the base itself is done, so now we just need a landing system to land this whole thing. Now here was the part it became tricky, because the whole thing needed to fit into a fairing that looks somewhat okay and isn't completely oversized like all of my other fairings. And so I ended up with this. Now if you think it looks a little bit like an inflatable boat, you're probably correct. That was unintended though. and. Yeah, the problem just is if a Kerbal has a needle with him, the whole thing's gonna deflate and it will kind of be shit. So let's hope this doesn't happen. But with that, this ludicrously overbuilt landing system is also done and everything that's left to do is the launch vehicle itself. And first of all, the transfer stage that will bring us to Ike and circularize ourselves around Ike. Now, the important thing when you're building such a transfer stage is is that the center of thrust goes through the center of mass. Without that, forget it, you're not going to get anywhere, okay? And then I added those fuel tanks that serve as beams to hold the struts together. Because in KSP2, even the struts need struts to hold the struts together that hold the struts together. I hope you can still follow. But with that, everything that's left to do is add a fairing. And you can see the fairing is ludicrous, like completely out of proportion. But after adding some side fuel tanks that just serve to make the whole thing look a bit less ludicrous, the whole rocket was basically ready and at the end I just switched the engines. So let's get to the launch. And with that we have liftoff with this really cool song called Black Paddy. You can see it in the info card. But yeah, we are doing our gravity turn here and everything is going good. Now, something about this rocket is a bit weird and special in a weird way. Because this rocket, believe it or not, is an SSTO. It was completely on accident, but it is an SSTO. Like, I could fly to orbit in one stage. I, I haven't planned this guys, it just happened. <laughs> so this here is my most capable SSTO I've ever built. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, but hey, it, it fulfills the purpose. But then after a little sunset and a little orbit burn, we are 
Jesus, that was a voice crack. Uh, I'm recording this at 10.30 a.m. Maybe this is not the best idea, but I'm all doing it for you. Here we are in orbit, so let's go to Ike. Let's fly towards Duna. Let's explore Duna's mysterious volcano's moon. And you can also see that the boosters of the rocket are slowly but surely depleting of fuel and with that it's no longer really an SSTO. So let's fly away from Kerbin and stage away the fairing and the upper stage. Here goes the fairing, here goes the upper stage. You can see the base here and with that we are on our best way to the red planet. And here is Ike in an eclipse behind Duna. And then I wanted to decelerate and found out ah, this maneuver node is goddamn close. We have to hurry a bit. So let's turn this thing around. Let's somehow just press Y and let's hope it all goes well. And But somehow it worked out and we, we didn't get into the orbit we wanted to, but we got in an orbit. So that's also a win. But yeah, that's a key difference between KSP1 and KSP2. The maneuver node system works completely differently. But at the end, I could deal with it a bit. I'm still used to KSP1. But here is the orbit. So let's swing around Ike one more time and then we can get into the final orbit and start our landing procedure after that, which is extremely cool in my opinion. But first of all, this shot is just cool. You, can, you can't argue with me, it's just cool. So let's start the landing procedure. We have chosen our volcano to land on for today and now we are decelerating towards that volcano. And as far as I could see, that's pretty much one of the biggest volcanoes on Ike. That's why I've chosen it. The bigger, the better, you know the rule. For volcanoes, of course. But then we are finally correcting our course towards the volcano and then we can stage away the base landing system from the base transfer stage and activate our four engines with ludicrous amounts of fuel. Like extraordinary amounts of fuel. You can see we have 3000 meters a second just to land on Ike. But yeah, you can see the volcano here on the map screen and you can see the volcano here in this shot. And you can also see the transfer stage which will just crash into the volcano and then the deceleration burn will start. And then we can tip over and start landing on the surface of I. Here we are. Now, this landing was a little bit chaotic, I have to say, because it was difficult to find a flat enough landing spot. And there were its fair share of failures with that landing. But at the end, this spot here seemed like the right one. And that was the one I landed on. Now, staging away those side tanks was also quite tricky. You can see I had to quick save once. And after stabilizing ourselves, we can stage away the side tanks. Here they go. Now, it was all a bit dangerous, but at the end, it kind of worked out. I'm glad that the gravity on Ike isn't that high because, well, the base would have had to explode it. But we have landed the base on Ike. Here we are on our target destination inside of a volcano. Isn't that just cool? I love this mission personally. So let's get the Kerbals out. First Kerbal, I think it's Jab, I have no idea. We can plant a flag after all, because that's the most important part of the mission. So let's add a little description text and then we can plant the flag down. Isn't this beautiful? The flag plants are always the best part of the mission for me. I mean, that's the whole reason you fly somewhere. But anyway, and after that we can get the second Kerbal out. And after that, the third. And then something funny happened. Because I jumped and wanted to use the RCS jetpacks, but it, it didn't work. And the Kerbal just landed on top of another one. And this reminded me of a screenshot Pandorion sent me on Discord, a viewer of this channel and Discord honorary member. And I had this screenshot as my phone background for so long and actually I have it as my phone background again. I recreated my phone background, I guess. 
And then I went exploring a bit on the mountains because I'm Swiss and I have to go to the mountains. It's just a law. It's just my nature, okay? And here you can see them. It's, it's super cool how Ike looks. But if you want to see a bit more of a more ambitious base build, click on the screen. This video is pretty much my best edited video. No show, guys. That video on screen is just good. But then we will see us next week. And don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye. And you can... <coughs> Jesus.